welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, the lengthy Luke Cutler. <laughs> This week we're talking about a drawn out disease and a present pandemic, but first we have a wee YouTube comment. Oh gosh, plot twist. This comment says, this episode equals by panic. Every one of them is fine. I'm not even gonna pretend to understand what that means. By panic is when bisexual people are attracted to someone and they get all flustered about it. Ah, oh, well that's that's very nice. It was very kind. Thank you very much. <laughs> and now I've got a question for you, Luke, and for everyone who's watching or listening at home. The question is, have you had COVID? And have you ever had long COVID also? Someone came to our flipping Psy Guys live show with COVID and gave us all COVID. And we were all ill for like a week and a half. I forgive you if that helps. I have the utmost forgiveness. And also, don't let that um, sway your view on Psy Guys live events. Uh, they're actually very healthy. Uh, we just, we won't, we won't include the everyone coughing on each other's open mouths segment <laughs> again. That, that, one was a, that one was a real oversight. We learned I think. our lesson, I think. <laughs> I thought the open mouth kissing between, you know, you and me was fine, but obviously it wasn't. Obviously it wasn't. It wasn't the main attraction, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, answer the question on Spotify, on YouTube, or uh, send us um, a messenger. Just a person. I don't know. Do what you want. Do that thing where you like shave someone's hair and then you tattoo it on their head and then you let their hair grow back and you send that person to us. Well, and we have to shave off their their hair again or does the tattoo stop the hair from growing yeah no we have to shave the hair off again oh that's fun that's how the message is secret so I think okay so there's, <laughs> there's now two ways that you can request a Psy Guys episode you can go to the Patreon and you can you can pay for the thing where you can request a Psy Guys episode or you can send us a messenger with the with the request tattooed on the head of the messenger with fully grown hair and we shave the hair off and then we'll do that episode as well lemon juice uh, would be a lot cheaper but yeah I, I prefer the hair one so let's actually get into the episode and and as Luke alluded to, yes, we both had COVID actually quite recently. I've had it two times, to my knowledge, thus far in my life. First time was fine. Totally asymptomatic. The second time, horrible. And I genuinely was really worried about long COVID. So why don't we just dive right in? Luke, my first question for you is, what is long COVID? Okay, so long COVID, I don't know if it's actually like medically diagnosed, but it's, oh, maybe it is medically diagnosed. How exciting. It's the kind of phenomenon where like you have COVID, you completely recover from COVID, but then some stuff sort of lingers around and you kind of got like fuzzy, fuzzy brain foggy, uh, that kind of thing. So you don't completely recover from COVID. You recover from the virus <laughs> and the virus has left your body, but it leaves some devastating effects. Ooh, well, we'll find out about that. Okay, the virus has not completely left your body Who then. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? We don't... I, I will find out, Luke. You won't test positive for COVID anymore. Yes. Good job. Okay, okay thank you. <laughs> God, you're a pedant. <laughs> I'm not a pedant. This is like actually really, it's really important to the episode. Um, and it is actually quite interesting because, you know, I've been kind of putting off a long COVID episode for a while, I guess, because the first time we did an episode on COVID, I really whiffed it. Um, <laughs> if you recall, Luke, uh, do you remember what I said? You said something like, I think this is all going to blow over in a couple of weeks and it's all being a little bit uh, overstated. No, no, no. I didn't say it was being overstated. That, that I don't, my, my I did say that I, you know, I thought it would, it could be all blown over in a few weeks. And bear in mind, when we first did the episode, that was like, as soon as we sort of knew about this, when things were first coming out. Um, and I, in my defense, I will still say that had the governments of the world handled this remotely effectively, we could have... We we could have dealt with we we could have dealt with it a lot better. We wouldn't still be in a pandemic right now, maybe. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah, you also said all those other things as well. Didn't you? you know, you said like, oh, let the bodies pile high. Uh, I don't care how many old people have to die in order to save the economy. Oh, hang on, oh, that, that was, was our a, prime minister. That was the prime minister, yeah, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Saved us a few million there. Oh <laughs> gosh, yeah, no, no. That's it's really difficult to remember whether it's me or <laughs> Boris Johnson that said something. Yeah, how many children have you got again, Corey? Oh God. I can't even remember. That's that's another thing that we've oh, got in common. No, that's not you. That's the prime minister that's again. That's the prime minister. Oh, oh even oh. And why gosh. have you? Why did you take so long to hand over your WhatsApp messages? 
just the COVID inquiry? Oh, um, oh no, that was, that was Boris the Prime Minister Johnson again. again. Oh, oh, goodness me. Oh. oh, but remember that time when uh, we were all partying during COVID? Yeah. Do you remember that? Oh, oh. No, hold on, because that was at Downing Street, and, and that wasn't us. That was... Oh, that was the government again, wasn't it? Oh, God, that government. They're dealing with COVID. They did, they did such a good job. <laughs> Such a good job! Anyway, no, um, I, I want to be clear. We're still in a pandemic. Um, look up the numbers. They're not great. Deaths are down. Yeah, uh, good. Um, known cases are way below what they were before. Um, but have you noticed that maybe you don't get free tests anymore and we're not making a whole big thing mm -hmm. about testing and also kids, uh, I think after about three days, um, can just be sent back to school. And in fact, I think can just go to school oh. if they only have mild symptoms. Um, so yeah, still in a pandemic. That's interesting. I didn't realize we were still in a pandemic because I have been in hospitals recently. That sounds really dramatic. I was in like an NHS place and a hospital at some point. N not as dramatic as it sounds. And I saw like all these old COVID sort of posters are still up saying like, always wash your hands, always wear a face mask. And I was like, oh, they've not bothered to take this down. No, apparently we're still in a pandemic. I had learned I had learned that today. Yeah, That's of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, this is the this is what was um kind of bugging me is that people were getting really ill. That's not what was bugging me, but people were getting really ill, and everyone was getting sort of ill at the same time. And actually, the thing that did bug me was that this happened around about my birthday, and so about a quarter of the people that were supposed to come, yeah. to come for, for my birthday thing were just like ill, and we were both ill. Shortly before my birthday, yeah. other people we know had to cancel their parties because they were ill. Um, and it was really going around. And, you know, to my knowledge, I was like, that reminds me of back when we were still, you know, acting as though we were in a pandemic. Mm. Like, it feels exactly the same in terms of, like, how many people are getting it. If not, like, worse, more people seem to be getting it. And actually, more people seem to be more affected by it than, you know, than they did. And obviously, this is sort of anecdotal evidence, right? It's not, um, it's not, uh, you can't use my experience to extrapolate out to the entire country. But I, I did find it really weird that it seemed to be more severe now for some people, just the symptoms, you know, yes. than it did than it did before. And obviously we're sort of young people, you know, we're young adults or we're, look, we're in our, mostly in our 20s and early 30s, right? We're not the people that this should be affecting really, really severely. But, you know, some people were having a really, really rough go of it. And it, it is just sort of weird, this cognitive dissonance that we have of, yeah, we just, it's, well, it, we're, we're sick of it now. It's it's been t it's been like two years. Two years is too long to focus on a pandemic. So let's just let's just not anymore. Let's just let's just let's just forget about it. Yes, that is the state <laughs> we are in. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, so yeah, let's get back into the question that I asked you, which is what is long COVID? So it's an illness that happens in at least ten percent of um, COVID infections. So ten percent of people that that you know uh, get COVID will end up with long COVID, which Again, in a pandemic, if we're only looking at the deaths as being the big bad thing mm. um, or the cases even, you know, of like the, the positive tests, but we're not doing such rigorous testing as we were before. And 10% of people, 10% are ending up with, you know, essentially a disabling um, chronic illness. Maybe that is not good. No. No? And a very good incentive to not not get everyone infected again. I, uh, yes. Because the way that the NHS will have to think about that is that um, that's like, you know, they have to think financially about some, some of these things as well because, and uh, governmentally, you have to think financially about some of these things mm. because, you know, that's going to be people who are less able to work. That's going to have economic sort of pain in a much longer um, sense than, than than sometimes like just locking the country down for a little bit. Um, like if that's going to be like 10% of your workforce are like underproductive for the rest of their lives, mm. That's not a good thing. Yeah. That is a really tough thing. Yeah. And I love that, Luke, the capitalist that you are, immediately think about how productive these people are. But I, <laughs> I, Luke, am actually a person that cares about other people. <laughs> and so I'm more concerned about the experiences of these people who are being disabled by long yeah, COVID. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> about why the government would do something about it. Uh, obviously, because the no, government, agree, especially the one we have now, don't really do stuff when it's just like, oh, it's not very nice for people. Let's not. Let's not let the, that happen. The opposite. They, they're actually more like, that's not very nice for people that we don't like. Yes. Yeah, let's do it. They probably voted Send Labour. Send them to Rwanda. Long COVID, didn't they? <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? That's just what the government is doing now. It's like, immigrants bad, trans people bad. Let's make life hard for them. But make life better for all of the people who are being disabled by this condition. 
Eh, that one when it's an election, but but that's kind of why I bring that yeah. up is because is because actually that will cause problems for the government. Mm-hmm. Like it does cause problems for the government if lots of people are 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 less able to work. Like that does cause issues. Why are you so focused they, on the government? Luke? That they are that they will care about because they're the ones who do stuff, Corey. They're the ones who do things. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, com- <laughs> I completely agree with we you. We started this, this playing a game of was it Corey or was it Boris Johnson who said this thing? <laughs> that's why I'm thinking about the government. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're so right, though. You're so right. Like, there, um, it, it is very short-sighted, even, you know, from the most sort of, um, and I use the biggest possible air quotes, pragmatic sense, you know, um, as a government. It, it, it makes sense to avoid 10% of people that get infected with this very infectious disease that you're really not doing very much to curtail the spread of. Um, it makes sense to, you know don't have that many people be disabled, right? Like, that's... If I was running a country, I would probably want to, you know, like, limit the number of people uh, becoming chronically ill from a, you know, relatively preventable disease. But they know that they're on the way out anyway, so... They don't care anymore. You mean the people who are infected or the government? The government. (laughs) That's the preferable option, to be honest with you, Luke. Yeah. So let's move on. As I said, 10% of uh, cases, but it could be 10 to 30% of non-hospitalized cases and 50 to 70 of hospitalized cases um, and 10 to 12% of vaccinated cases. So the difficulty here is that you know, we we're not we don't, we don't necessarily have enough data, right? Because it's just cases that we know about, and there are undiagnosed cases, and there are people who don't realize that. They, I mean, imagine you're like you know maybe a little bit asymptomatic, or you just enough that you just think you've got a cold, right? And then you start you get like really mild sort of you know brain fog and whatnot for you know the t- the time afterwards. And I you have never brain tested fog positive. all the time anyway. That, you, <laughs> so it doesn't help. That is that is true. That is true. But most people don't have that. What? Right? So <laughs> my point is, you know, like you're not going to necessarily connect um a cold that you had, you know, a few weeks ago to why do I suddenly mm. not why am I not thinking at my maximum capacity? Why do I feel more tired all of a sudden? You're not going to link it to that cold because people aren't necessarily testing, right? So they don't they're not going to know that they had COVID um, and they're not necessarily going to know that what they've got is long COVID. It's really similar, I think, um, to how uh, some people manage to conflate uh, vaccines with autism. Uh, to be absolutely clear for everyone watching and listening and also for the YouTube people that are reviewing this, vaccines do not cause autism at all. OK, YouTube reviewers, they don't. OK, we've said it. We're being very clear, but some people yeah, those think YouTube that, reviewers all too often they they think vaccines cause autism. <laughs> all too often they will watch one of a video that mentions autism no, and know. vaccines, and then make us not make any money from I that know, video. I, I just <laughs> so, like the idea that there's loads of YouTube reviewers who <laughs> are conspiracy theorists. Yeah, but um, if, you're telling them off. <laughs> if you want to support us talking about things like this, uh, you know we get demonetized for this a lot. I was going through a lot of our old episodes, and all of our COVID ones were demonetized. Uh, we've had um, vaccine episodes. Uh, that were, you know, made before COVID was even a thing, be demonetized and in some cases removed from YouTube, which really affects our channel, really affects the income of SciGuys. If you want us to be able to keep on talking about these things, go ahead and join our Patreon, uh, become a YouTube channel member, uh, subscribe on Apple, even donate uh, through PayPal or whatever. You know, if you enjoy the show, uh, you want to help us make it. This That sort of stuff really helps because it's really difficult trying to tiptoe around the sort of, um, the, the, the sort of I wouldn't say censorship, but tiptoe around sort of uh, being ad safe, um, especially on topics like this, because even though we're educational, we're, uh, we have all of our sources listed, um, we use reputable sources, and to the best of our ability, we are talking about factual information, um, it still just gets caught um, by the automatic filters and the reviewers don't necessarily, you know, they want to be as safe as possible. So if you're mentioning this sort of stuff, a lot of the, a lot of the time you can just be demonetized. But my point is that People who think that vaccines cause autism, um, what they'll do is they'll see that, you know, oh, well, a kid had a vaccine at this time. And then I, I started noticing that they were, uh, they had like sort of signs of autism, you know, um, a few weeks, a few months later. And so what they what they do is they connect those two things in their head. They're like, oh, well, I saw this stuff shortly, shortly after they had the vaccine. 
never mind the fact that those two things aren't related. That's just naturally the time, like, you know, the, the time that kids usually would start showing signs of autism. <laughs> it just so happens to be not too long after when we schedule their vaccines. Like, those two things are independent of each other. They just happen to coincide. It's coincidental, quite literally. Um, and the opposite sort of thing would be the case, let's say, you know, if if you're trying to understand, um, oh, well, why am I feeling so tired all of a sudden? You've got all these symptoms of long COVID, but you don't know that they're symptoms of long COVID, and you don't even know that you had COVID. COVID, so you don't even have something to pinpoint and be like, oh, this must be what it was, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, there's there's an issue there just with even knowing how many people um, sort of have this. But um, what is really, I think, important here to, to remember is that 10 to 12% of vaccinated cases um, could, could sort of, um, is, is the incidence rate there. So get vaccinated. If you've, if you've somehow managed to go this far into a pandemic without having a vaccine, just just get it. Not any vaccine, by the way. The COVID vaccine. You can get any vaccine if you want. <laughs> As a treat. I don't think the MMR vaccine is going to help you with COVID, you know. <laughs> but um, if you don't want MMR, measles, mumps and rubella, get that one too, you know. Get, get, get all the ones that are available to you. Go for it. Get, have a field day. It's fun. It's a good time. Um, so, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and you might you might know uh, this, Luke. Or I'm, I'm sure you do know this. COVID-19 is a respiratory illness. Mm. Um, so it affects the uh, respiratory system. So basically you're breathing sort of stuff, right? You know, lungs and whatnot. That, that's generally what it, what it affects. Even the name, uh, SARS-CoV-2 is the sort of full name. Um, SARS, uh, Severe Acute Respir- Respiratory, um, I think, Syndrome. Um, um, coronavirus 2, that's the full sort of name. It, it, it just describes what it is. Um, coronavirus, <laughs> which is the, you know, which is the virus that's, which one of the, vi- the virus that's caused it. And uh, 2. Version but, 2. There we go. But yeah, no. Uh, so it's respiratory. But you might you might um, have noticed um, from sort of maybe your own reading or hearing people talk about their experiences that, or, you know, even your own experience mm. of having COVID, that it doesn't just affect your respiratory system um, and long COVID as well isn't just, it's not like, oh, well, I've got uh, a cough and shortness of breath. You know, it it's much more holistic than yeah, that. Yeah, the first two days after I'd caught COVID but didn't have symptoms mm. or quote unquote like normal COVID symptoms yet, I was just trying to get work done and I couldn't focus and yeah. think. And like I couldn't even string sentences together sometimes. And I was sitting there and my friend who had also caught it at that same event was like also doing this. Yeah. We were like, why are we both so useless yeah. today? And then like a day later, one of our friends goes, I've got COVID. And we all go, oh, we've all got COVID. Fantastic. Yeah. I had the same thing, man. I had the same thing. I was I was trying to explain myself and I was really worried. We had um, a Psy Guy session booked in and you know we were we decided, well, Luke drives here. He doesn't need to see any. He can get into his car and come to the house without seeing another person or sharing the same air with them at all, right? So it would be perfectly reasonable for Luke to come to the house and record Sci Guys because everyone you're going to interact with is already infected, right? We're not increasing the risk of anyone else. Then, you know, the day starts to roll around and I'm like, I cannot physically do this. I mean, I couldn't stand up for more than, you know, 15 minutes at a time. I had to have a chair in the kitchen so that I could cook, you know, maybe wow. once a day and that would wipe out all my energy. It was really bad, really bad. I was worried it was going to last quite a while. I still got maybe like a little bit of brain fog, perhaps, but maybe I'm just stupid. I don't know. <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to tell. But the point is that when when we were supposed to record Sci Guys that day, I'm, I remember speaking to you. I was like, dude, I'm sorry. Um, I cannot string a sentence together. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to do what I need to do for this show, which is read something on the fly um, and sort of explain it to you and have a conversation and explain thoughts that are in my head. I'm physically incapable of doing that. You know, it, it would take me five minutes to get a single, you know, thought out. And even then it would only be half formed and barely comprehensible. You know, it's like talking to a five-year-old that's, that's kind of distracted. It was really rough. That's just like a normal Side Guys episode, Corey. So the NHS says <laughs> most people feel better within a few days or weeks of their first COVID-19 symptoms and make a full recovery within 12 weeks. Uh, for some people, it can be more serious illness and their symptoms can last longer. This is called long COVID or post-COVID-19 syndrome. Uh, long COVID is a new condition which is still being studied. Um, and 65 uh, people worldwide are estimated to have long COVID. 65 mil, that is. 65 mil. 65 million. Not 65. Insane. Like, that's a lot. So a lot of people, uh, more than the population of some 
countries. It's about Britain. It's about, yeah. 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 Those are estimates, right? We don't know. This could be... We, we don't know. That's a really difficult thing. This, is, this was a worldwide pandemic. And um, we only just, just like, this is what bugs me about it. And we've got a lot to get through. So I don't want to spend too much of the time up top just spinning our wheels, getting annoyed. But I need to get this out. <laughs> Every single person who did not take this seriously, especially those in government, especially those in government, have done this to everyone because this is something we needed to come together to deal with. All of the people who were sowing doubts um, about vaccines, which, by the way, were perfectly safe, very obviously, and there has been no data to show that, you know, uh, maybe we shouldn't have used those vaccines, right? But there has been a lot of data to show, hey, Maybe just getting COVID and not dying isn't just fine, you know? Maybe getting COVID and not dying means that there could still be other effects of that disease. And 10% at minimum, that is the minimum estimate that I've seen. Look, 10% of people get a chronic illness from this. And maybe it wouldn't fall under the exact definition of chronic illness, but I think it probably would, given that there are symptoms that are chronic and last for quite some time, and they can even be disabling. You know, there's ob it's obviously different sort of um, effects, but, uh, you know, Matt Gray, friend of the pod, uh, had, uh, had long COVID and perhaps still does now. And I, I distinctly remember sort of seeing Matt's stories, um, just talking about how difficult uh, doing some things uh, was, you know, like you, you have one task for the day and because, you know, you're so used to being able to do stuff, you overexert yourself and, you know, you've all of your energy has gone to this one thing and then you can't do anything else for the rest of the day. You're just exhausted. And I definitely experienced that whilst I had COVID, you know, like I was like, I woke up one morning, I was like, actually, I'm feeling so much better. Awesome. Amazing. Um, I'll, I'll make myself breakfast because I, I need to eat more regularly than I did before. Because usually I don't need to eat all that regularly. I can, you know, I can, I usually wouldn't have breakfast. And if I do have breakfast, I then don't usually need to eat for the whole day sort of thing. Like I, I can get by and it doesn't really bother me, right? To sort of listen to my body. When I was listening to my body, it was like, no, if you've not eaten within an hour of waking up, I'm not working for you today. And so I'd make breakfast for myself and that would be such a strenuous activity because I don't have cereal or whatever. I have to, like, I cook myself a breakfast and it's like, you know, what? Um, it, like a uh, scrambled, bloody, what they called chickpeas, a chickpea scramble or whatever, right? Not very difficult, right? Maybe 15 minutes, too much, too much. I couldn't, couldn't do anything for the rest of the day. And this is the reality that people are having to live with. Um, and, you know, it's one thing um, to have another condition, you know, that you've had for some time and learn to live with that throughout your adult life. And it's a completely other thing to very suddenly become disabled. And I don't want to, I want to be very clear here, you know, uh, disabled people are obviously just as valuable as anyone else. Their their lives, their experiences hold just as much value. Um, and we shouldn't be trying to sort of, let's say, reduce the number of disabled people through eugenics or whatever. But if you have the option of someone, you know, having a disabling condition or not having a disabling condition before they have that condition, you would want to probably choose them, for them to not be disabled, right? Like just generally for their own, for their own sort of well-being. Like it, 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 I think that's kind of a no-brainer. And very suddenly becoming disabled is probably not very easy to deal with. It would be a very traumatic experience as well. You get a kind of like whiplash of like, mm. um, you know, I, I heard loads of stories when I was growing up. We had a guy come in um, who like lost a leg suddenly and mm -hmm. talked about how actually in the, in, in the, um, in the fullness of time, he, there were certain aspects of his life where he's like, I was, I'm quite glad that happened to me because I'm better in these ways and I mm -hmm. learned these things and, and that, and you know, you can turn it into a good thing. Yeah. But the, the immediacy of like, you wake up one day and then the next day your life is like significantly altered, not to a way that you can't get used to it, mm -hmm. but you have not, You've lived your life thus far with a set of like strategies for life yeah. being the, on the assumption that you have two legs. Um, that's like, yeah, it's like a, a sort of mental whiplash, yeah. isn't it? Like, just, it's not like you've gradually declined and you've got used to it. Um, you just one day 
every strategy you had for life is completely different. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I know I've been talking a lot about my experiences. I just want to say another couple things here on that, um, because it was really similar to when I was concussed. You know, I've been concussed a couple times and I had post-concussion or post-concussive syndrome, um, you know, I think twice. Once it was really bad. And this was after I went to a neck deep gig and someone who shall remain unnamed, the fifth Psy guy, um, <laughs> started a pit that ended up with me being kicked or headbutted in the back of the head. Don't go to pop punk gigs if you're over uh, 5'11 or like six foot because they're all short. And when they jump, they will hit the base of your skull and it's not pleasant. I was just trying to enjoy my, my boys. Uh, my, my neck deep boys and suddenly I was neck deep in a pit that was behind me should I have had more spatial awareness no the unnamed person the fifth side guy shouldn't have started a very violent pit directly behind me I think anyway so I was concussed have you been in an accident that wasn't your fault <laughs> <laughs> I got a guy for that <laughs> great um, but, um, um, so I you know I, I was concussed and I was concussed for quite a while and uh, actually quite funnily um, I caught I caught COVID right after I was concussed the first time oh, the, the, first, whammy. The, the first time I caught COVID you know this was uh, last year a few years ago a while ago right I was totally fine. Um, but this time it was a lot more like that concussion. And when I was concussed, you know, there was one point where I was really, I, I get annoyed not being able to just do stuff. Mm. Like I, I I very much need to just be, be flexible and just do things when I want to, because so often I have executive function, function issues where I'm unable to do something that if I'm able to do something, I want to to do it. So I was like, I'm going to the shops. I'm not able to go to the gym, <laughs> but I'll walk past the gym and I'll go to the shops that are near the gym that I go after I've gone to the gym. So I went there and I, I did my shopping. The lights were horribly bright and the co-op radio was playing and it was too much. And then I, 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 I quickly did what I could and shopped. And then I went to walk home and that was it. Too much. I had to sit and I, I called up um, the unnamed person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I called up, I, yeah, I called up the fifth side guy and I was like, hey, um, I'm stuck uh, about 10 minutes walk from home. I simply, I'm sat on a bench and I simply cannot make it back. So don't be worried about me. I'm just going to wait out here until I'm able. And I had to sit there for like, you know, 15 minutes or something before <laughs> I was able to cut, like finish the walk home. But um, yeah, and sort of, you know, having to deal with that daily is a lot, you know, like obviously you need to rewrite your entire sort of, um, as, you know, as you said, like sort of plans, your strategies for dealing with life. But all, all of a sudden, and you don't even know what you're not able to do until you're not able to do it. Like I, the thing is, like, like I said, I can usually really get by by treating my body not very well, by listening to it, of course, <laughs> but like, Okay, I'll not eat until the evening because I've kind of forgot and <laughs> like there's not enough there aren't any signals telling me hey like you're not you're not you know you're not working well or you're not able to do this. So, okay, cool. But when I had covid, it was like yeah, bro, you need to sleep properly, eat well, um and then you'll just barely be able to do maybe one or two things over the course of the whole day. You know, it's like I, I had a hangover from seeing friends, like, li <laughs> yeah. like literally, like I, like I went out, I, I was testing negative. I went out um, and just spent a night playing Risk board game with friends. Very easy. Um, and came home, you know, by midnight, early night, you know, for, for me. And the next morning I woke up and I wasn't able to do anything till like 1 p.m. <laughs> um, and I just want to say that because that's the sort of that's the sort of like understanding of what this could be like. And it could be quite a lot worse and it could even be maybe perhaps milder. But that's that's COVID and that's what long COVID could be for an indefinite period of time. So uh, just some more stats about COVID. So as of uh, t the 12th of October, 2023, there have been, goodness me, 771 million confirmed cases of COVID-19, including 6 6.9 million uh, deaths reported to the World Health Organization. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, but, uh, you know, on a more positive note, um, as of the 5th of October, 2023, is that 13 billion? I think 13.5 billion. No, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make. Oh, no, it does make sense. 13.5 billion vaccine doses have been administered. Yeah, that makes sense. Because you get more than one dose. Yes. Yes. Some I was people like, have had like four or five. Yeah, I was like, there aren't 13 billion. <laughs> We're not there yet. Who's having all these vaccine Who's doses? Who's done that? <laughs> <laughs> the world has. No, but yeah. Um, but, you know, that's that's quite positive. But uh, just to under understand where we're at right now, um, you can still go onto the, uh, the the government website in the UK and see what the what the COVID stats are. So in England, in the last seven days as of recording, um, or sorry, this 
services up to and including uh, the 7th of October, 2023, you know, the, se the those seven days. Um, it looks like there were, what, 15,000 people tested positive or 15,000, uh, yeah, 15,000 people tested positive in that week. Mm. Um, deaths, it was 235 wow, in those still, seven days. Yeah. That's crazy. That's yeah. still going on. And I, this, this is the thing, look, I, I was looking at this when I had COVID because I was like, I, I mean, in a pandemic, obviously, or yeah. just before, but just before I got COVID as well, because people were, you know, getting it. And I was like, this, I mean, I just want, I've not really looked at the stats because, you know, yeah. ADHD, if it's not in front of me, I've just kind of like forgotten about it. And I'm like, I really should do that. Um, patients admitted um, in England, this was up to including the 6th of October um, for the, those seven days, it was 3,366. Um, and virus testers, uh, virus tests conducted in England um, up to including the 10th of October for those seven days uh, was 25,884. But didn't you say that the confirmed cases was like... How many thousand? Fifteen thousand. So most of the people taking tests have have got COVID at the moment. Well, that's the thing. If you I think know about, that makes sense. You but know, like, yeah. that's like more than half of the people taking a test for, for in, in a flu season as well. Mm. More than, than half of the people getting sort of fluy sort of symptoms and going, "Have I got COVID?" St do have COVID? But we weren't even in flu season really. Like if you think about it, the the, the heat that we were experiencing and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. You know. Yeah. True. In uh, October, that was basically still summer. Mm. Where it's only just started to get colder now. Now we're really probably getting into flu season and like. Man, we had a spike in August uh, for testing. Um, it, it was going down towards July, as you'd expect, um, you know, over the course of the sort of summer. And then it started to peak up in August, um, up in September. Those are the deaths, but the same with the people testing positive um, and patients admitted as well. But yeah, these numbers aren't looking super great right now, even mm. the trends of them. But I, I'd recommend having a look because it's good to be informed in this sort of stuff and mm. just good to know where we are. So we already know the symptoms of COVID, but I'll just quickly run through them. It's your standard sort of flu-like symptoms, you know, um, uh, a fever, sort of high temperature or chills, um, a new continuous cough. I mean, we know all of these because they were drilled into us, weren't they? Hmm. Um, losing or uh, losing or a change to your uh, sense of taste or smell, um, a shortness of breath, um, fatigue, uh, body aches, headache. Oh, that was real bad. Did hmm. you have a? That was that one was rough. Uh, sore throat, uh, blocked runny nose, of course. Um, loss of appetite, or diarrhea, or feeling sick or being sick. And just a really quick and easy thing for you to you know, a general sort of rule of thumb. Uh, if you want to know whether you've got sort of just a cold or a flu, uh, just sort of differentiate between those two things. Usually with a cold, you're not going to have sort of like stomach issues, mm. right? Like sort of, I think diarrhea or, or, or things like that. Um, if, if you've got that, it's, I, I was looking that up. I think that's like not a, that, that would then not be a cold mm. and it'd be more likely to be a flu then. Um, but of course, look this up yourself and get tested and whatnot, you know, just general rule of thumb yeah interestingly as well like just for anyone who 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 worries about it like i got the first time ever i've had covered a few times mm. and this time was the first time i'd ever had a change in taste really and it was really really pronounced like <sighs> stuff like stuff that i liked eating that i would eat as comfort foods like mm -hmm. things like that kind of like pesto -y pasta you love that yeah. i love pesto -y pasta uh vegan pesto -y pasta not spawn not spawn by what? Vegan pesto pasta? Yeah. Uh, not, <laughs> big vegan, bro. Not They're spawn. <laughs> yeah, big vegan. Um, that stuff tastes like shit. It tastes so bad. Really? And I was sitting there going, I just want to eat my nice comfort pasta. <sighs> and it tasted awful. So like, I now understand what that specific symptom's like. And if you've never had that and you start getting that, that could like, it could be that, like, obviously I'm one person, I'm mm. one anecdote, but it could be that like whatever variant of COVID's bopping around now it it does that to you if you didn't have it previously or it's mm -hmm. more likely to create that symptom than, than previous variants. I know that lots of people had it before. Yeah, I don't um, know if we can say that about um, about that variant just based on your oh, experience. Oh, I just said like, it could be. Like, yeah, no, sure. Maybe, if yeah. you've never had it before and you suddenly get that symptom, it may well be COVID is my point. Oh, right. Yes. I see what you mean. Yes. If no. you've never had that symptom and this time you do get it, yeah. which is my, what my experience was, that could be COVID because I didn't spot it yeah. straight away. No, that makes total sense. Yeah. And I, yeah, to be clear, like, you know, I got very severe symptoms this time, whereas last time I was asymptomatic. Mm. Um, and I just, I just kind of want to say that, you know, being asymptomatic at one point doesn't mean that you're going to be in future, you know, like these, this, this disease is constantly, uh, these viruses are like constantly sort of evolving. Of course they are. Of course they are. Um, and so, you know, how it affects you and your body is going to change as well. Um, and your immune system isn't static. If it was, it wouldn't be a very good immune system. So, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, don't, 
get too complacent about this, I think. Uh, but yeah, so those are the symptoms of COVID, obviously, you know, we know all of those, but let's just quickly run through long COVID. There's over 200 symptoms of this. Um, and as, as I said, it, it's not just your um, respiratory system that it affects. It, it can impact like many different organ systems, right? So the most common symptoms would be fatigue, a shortness of breath, a loss of smell, um, or muscle aches. Um, and even those themselves, you know, are not those are those could be very debilitating, um, and you know, loss of smell maybe not debilitating in um, you know in a sort of in the same sense as fatigue, but also you know not being able to smell things. It is a safety concern, mm. you know, especially if you're so used to being able to smell things, right? If you if you've lived your whole life without, without being without being able to smell, yeah, you're you're gonna be maybe still like less safe in some situations, but you're gonna know that you're not able to smell. If you suddenly lose your sense of smell, like you're not smelling everything all the time. So you're just gonna forget that you're not smelling stuff, right? So if you if you smell some in a situation where you might be smelling something that's dangerous, like you know gas, mm -hmm. right? You you're not like constantly. Mm, the air doesn't smell like gas right now, you know. You yeah. only notice when you do smell. And also, this is sort of a side point, but I I did recently look up how to know where the vegetables were off, and I think we'll have to check this, but I think the official government advice was like do the smell test. Yeah. Which was like mind blowing to me. I was like, really? That yeah. we, we just trust our uh, we trust our noses like that? Fair enough. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. This is what I don't. I like. I've uh, this whole sort of oh, we'll take the dates off of vegetable packaging to make them last longer. I'm like, have people been throwing things out? Oh when... yeah. Oh, people throw things out. This moment, a moment. Have you not seen that? Like, uh, there's like loads of sketches about that. There's jokes about that. But like, yeah, the moment something's on that line, people throw it away straight away. I thought the joke was that we didn't do that because that's ridiculous. No, no, no. Most, m many, many, many people will be doing that. That is genuinely shocking to me because with when it comes to vegetables and fruit, I'll eat that if it looks fine smells fine like i know like you know what you know if it's bad like you don't you can see it mm, like no. most yeah, people just throw it away poor i like i take everything out of the pack i don't even know what the dates on things are i'm not even gonna joke like because i put them into other packaging <laughs> like, I, like i like if it is it, is it moldy is it like really moldy okay that's that's gone is there just one tiny little bit and i can cut it so that it like it make sure that all of the sort of um the tendrils that will go down into it like you know are probably not in the bit that i'm gonna eat Sure. That's the nerdiest thing I've ever heard anyone say about moldy food. Well, no, it's just, I, I just want to say this because I know that people will probably point out that um, just because something, there's a bit of mold on the top sure. of something, that doesn't mean that you can cut that off and it's safe because, you know, it can sort of, it, it does actually kind of, the, the, the mold is just sort of the, the mold that you Flower. see is a fruiting body essentially. Yeah. Um, and the rest of the fungus will be inside. Um, so you just want to make sure that, you know, use your, use your best judgment. And if you have poor judgment, you'll get ill and die. Um, That's natural selection. It is. <laughs> I mean, it is. <laughs> like, but you, realistically, if you use like per judgment, a normal level of per judgment, you'll probably just get a bit ill. Right. Yeah. Right. Like probably. Right. And then you'll learn. You'll know better for next time. Right. That's the. That's that's it, innit? But no. Um. Some people can't smell off meat. I think. So the fifth Psy guy, who I've mentioned far too many times in this episode <laughs> thus far. Um. No offense, by the way. Uh. We've wow. got a whole playlist if you want to go see. Name drop. He is one of our most popular playlists. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna name drop that so I can pop a little link. Oh, well, I just meant that earlier on you weren't gonna oh. name him, and you just named him as the fifth Psy guy. That's because it's when going. he kicked me in the back of the head. So. <laughs> <laughs> name drop him this time. <laughs> <laughs> for eating moldy food. No, 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 no. The issue is that he cannot smell like when meat is off. So I would have to do the smell test for him on chicken. But like, it, I, I swear to God, Luke, this chicken would be smelling so bad that as soon as like, as soon as I like, I want to vomit. And he's just like, "Is it bad?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yes." Nah, I yes, think that's it's bad. I'm like that definitely. Are you kidding My me? My wife is the sniffer in our household. Good lord! Like, <laughs> like, like, it's just it, it doesn't even like. I can open the fridge. I'm like. You have you have meat that is off, and he's like, I didn't even know that, and I'm like, how? It is the most like offensive smell, you know. Yeah. But then obviously, taste and smells like how we experience them can be different. The most sort of common one would be um, coriander, I think, or uh, what what cilantro uh, for Americans, you know, that tastes like soap to some mm. people. Uh, but continuing on, uh, so those are just the most common symptoms that we went through: extreme tiredness, so fatigue, fatigue, um, shortness of breath, loss of smell, muscle aches. But there are others, um, you know, uh, actually, I'll just quickly say shortness of breath and a cough are the most common ones. So that 
usually persists for at least seven months um, in 40% uh, percent and 20% percent of pa patients with long COVID respectively. So 40% um, of patients with long COVID will have shortness of breath for at least seven months um, and 20% will have a cough, which, you know, it's not good. I mean, you know, short, like breathing is very important, very important. Um, and my lung collapsed when I was a little baby boy. So I, I very much want to breathe good because yeah. I don't know if these guys can take much more punishment honestly I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you man like <laughs> a lung collapses when you're one you you kind of hold on to that for a while uh, but anyway so there's more symptoms that you can have so brain fog that would be with memory and concentration um, and that's a difficult one to notice as well um, you know it's difficult to notice when like I, I, I think of it as sort of like thinking through mud you know mm -hmm. like I am it, it's weird because I'm I have a thought and I'm perfect. I know I have a, there is something there, but conveying that is impossible. Like I can't find the right words. Um, I can't even think about how to translate this abstract, you know, thing that's in my brain into a concept that could be understood by other people. Like, you know what I mean? Like in those situations, like when I've been concussed or when I, when I had COVID real bad, you know, that's what that felt like. And when it's kind of minor, it could maybe be difficult to notice. Like you might feel it in terms of sort of like, you know, not being able to find the right word for things every now and then, or just kind of like not being able to focus on things as much, you know, sort of stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so brain fog, uh, chest pain or tightness, insomnia, heart, pal heart palpitations, dizziness, pins and needles, joint pain, depression, and anxiety, tinnitus, earaches, um, nausea, diarrhea, stomach ache, loss of appetite, um, and a fever, cough, headache, sore throat, changes to smell or taste, or um, hives, like sort of rashes, you know? Um, all of those would be symptoms of long COVID. And I just kind of want to talk a little bit about the cognition because, you know, as I said, this is a respiratory um, disease, but you know, that's kind of how we, I mean, it's quite literally in the name. So why would you expect it to have such wide reaching um, effects? And I've got, some answers in front of me. Bear in mind, we don't know all of the answers. Uh, just throw at anything that you know you might, you know, you think might uh, connect these things. Okay, so you said respiratory. You said it's a respiratory disease. Yep. Now, this is not going to be the answer, but the first thing that comes to my head is lower oxygen to the brain. Do you know what, Luke? You're actually. I I'm glad you said that because I, I don't know if that's kind of specifically it, but there is um, a sort of idea of. Um, I guess, uh, damage to neurons uh, because of um, the sort of uh, blood vessels, the very sort of like the, the very small blood vessels, mm. sort of capillaries and whatnot, um, of those being uh, affected in some way. I, I want to be really, I, I'm being really cautious here because I don't want to <laughs> use the wrong words to discuss this sort of thing. But um, ultimately, what, what I'm kind of, what I'm kind of getting at here is that I guess it may come down to less oxygen going to those cells and that's what damages them. But yeah, no, damage to those cells through, um, you know, the sort of capillaries of the sort of blood vessels, that the vascular system that brings them um, oxygen and, and all the things that they sort of need being damaged because of the disease. Because that's right? really quite serious. Very serious, that's yeah. That's really very serious. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, if you know, if I if I just sort of read what I've got in my notes here for you, you know, 22% um, of uh, patients, um, they, fa they found cognitive impairment um, in them uh, at 12 weeks after infection, mm. which, you know, is... Is, like I, I might have that. Like I, it's hard to tell because ADHD. But I've been noticing. I think struggling to find words. And the diff, the diff, the annoying thing is right that like I have. I would, I would think a, a relatively decent vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Right. Um. I read a lot of books as a child, and I read stuff now. And I'm the kind of tosser that um <laughs> speaks like a prick. Um, <laughs> just naturally, yeah. unfortunately. Um, I use words that are long because I'm trying to get across a specific point. And sometimes I will do it just without thinking. I'll use unnecessarily sort of like flowery language just in a day-to-day -day situation and sound like a tosser. We actually did a whole episode of After Dark about this. We did this. a whole episode of After Dark about this, yeah. <laughs> I didn't realise that you did it in the sort of overly unnecessarily verbose sense as opposed to the kind of like... Uh, helpfully specific sense, which is what the After Dark episode was about. Here, here's the thing, Luke. I will, I, I'm saying that I'm overly verbose, but I mean, it's it, it it's not with any intention. It's just the words that I'm using. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it, you could you could argue that it's overly verbose, <laughs> but I would I would maybe contend otherwise. It's like that Sean Locke bit about about 
Russell Brand, where he's like, oh, yeah. uh, oh how lovely. He's like, oh, I, I'm really, he said, I don't like Russell Brand because yeah. I'm scared that my daughter will one day bring home someone, someone. Uh, someone like that <laughs> and he'll walk in my house and go, how delightful it is to be in your humble abode. Yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> I remember maybe about five years ago, I was like, oh, well, that was fortuitous. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> you are that kind of prick. <laughs> but like, I wasn't like, not on purpose. It was genuinely fortuitous. Aha! Uh-huh. But like, you know, A fortuitous <laughs> circumstance. Half of this bestowed itself upon us. But like, it's not like I'm like this is the annoying thing is that I know I'm not doing it intentionally. I feel like this is like why I, I call my dad, I call my mum and dad mother and father, but not from a posh sense. I do it because I fell out with my dad, yeah. and then I didn't call him dad anymore, yeah. and then I like deigned to then call him father, ironically, yeah. and then it just bloody just stuck, stuck. And now I sound so posh, and yeah. I have to explain to everyone I ever like am with with my parents who doesn't know that. I have to explain that I'm not just some posh prick. Oh my God, that's brilliant. <laughs> no, yeah, doesn't help when you have this voice either. No, it really. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing. You're 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 much less posh than you than you could be. I think. Do you know what I mean? Thank you. No, as in, like, if we're using posh as a negative, right? You know, sure. like, there are there are plenty of posh people around you, in fact. And one of the loveliest people that we know is so incredibly posh. It's actually quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> right? But um, we don't, I don't even want to talk about what I call your dad, actually, because that's... Is that's... my dad posh? No, 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 not about him being posh. Just the name that I use for your dad. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Big Dick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you said it, not me, okay? My dad listens to this podcast sometimes. Imagine he's listening i called him into his face multiple times i had to like i i, I don't know Hi, why dad so yeah we were talking about cognitive impairment and as i said uh you know 26 percent of uh, patients uh 12 months after um infection um and uh 16 of patients at two months after infection that was with one study um the, you could you could think of it as being similar to um, intoxication at the UK drink driving limit is is the quote I've got in front of me Whoa. there. Or another quote, 10 years of cognitive aging and it could increase over time. So yeah, so that just just to say there, so that was 16% of patients at two months after infection and 26% of patients at 12 months after infection. Um, and another another uh, meta-analysis that I mentioned earlier, um, 32% um, uh, had fatigue and cognitive impairment uh, was found in 22% after 12 weeks. So, I mean, these, these numbers, you don't need to think about them very specifically, but just what to understand from these is that with long COVID, um, it, or rather, you know, with with COVID, let's say, yeah, not not um necessarily, you know, the not necessarily that's the oh I get it and I didn't die and it's only going to affect old people thing that mm. um Bojo and and his lot tried to make you believe it was. Can I just check? It sounded like you said there were like the the rates of long COVID got higher the longer you went on. Yeah, so that's what I was saying. That um from this one study that they found that it there could be an increase in cognitive effects over time wow. in that um, in the first two months, there were 16% of patients had had cognitive impairment. Um, and at, 20, uh, at 12 months, 26% of patients um, had cognitive impairment. So it could be an increase over time, you know, sort of thing, um, which is which is not great. I mean, That's again, really this scary. is one study that has come from. So, uh, you know, take that with a grain of salt. I'm not saying that that's absolutely the case, but these are the results of of that study. Um, and all of our sources are linked below. And I, I, I you know, um, I do did use we off i mean we're, i i would say we we try to use quite good sources you know we'll we'll use mostly scientific papers and sometimes we'll have articles there um people think they're you know that's where you got your information it says references and further reading for a reason. Um, I like to provide sources that are easier for people to read that, you know, summarize things. And sometimes those articles have just one single bit of information that I've used. Like, oh, there's a, uh, there's a statistic. Um, am I going to go and find the exact study that they pulled this from? It's not really that important. No. You know what I mean? Like, I'll, uh, like uh, it's, it's, it's a reputable place whatever but there are some articles uh there that you could check in the description so like uh, you know all of this is generally coming from the nhs world health organization cdc um you know the british heart foundation things like that in places that you know would have quite good information and so yeah it's kind of mad uh one point uh, more than 1.3 million people who had COVID 19 showed mental health conditions like anxiety and depression um that uh 
uh, return to normal over time, but increased risks of uh, cognitive impairment, um, which is sort of brain fog, seizures, dementia, psychosis, and other neurocognitive conditions persisted for at least two years. Yeah. So uh, people had depression and anxiety, but that would kind of go back to normal. But those other conditions I just mentioned could last for up to two years, which, mm. yeah, not great. Um, and uh, we'll talk about the effect on organs, as I said, affects lots of organs, um, which, you know, you wouldn't necessarily immediately think from it being basically just kind of like a, a cold or a flu, right? Um, but again, common sense is not, it, it, it's not good. Um, science is better than common sense. What common sense is, is you feeling uh, something, thinking about your biases and being like, yeah, sounds about right. I'll go with that. <laughs> It's dumb. So, uh, yeah, there's multi-organ organ damage that's been found in multiple studies um, from COVID-19. So um, just one study um, looking at um, sort of uh, low-risk individuals, um, their hearts, lungs, ki liver, kidneys, pancreas, and spleen uh, found that 70% of the 201 patients that they were looking at had damage to at least one uh, of those organs, and 29% had multi-organ damage. Very good. Very good. Delicious. Yep. Um, and a uh, follow-up study they did one year later with the same group uh, with 536 participants this time. They found that 59% had single organ damage and 27% had multi-organ damage. 59%. Yeah. After uh, a year. And do they have any idea how that um, occurs like how does it, how does it damage another organ? Yes, oh. um, I do. I, I have some information on that. We don't. Well, we don't have. We don't know. Uh, we have. I do have some information that, yeah. I'll, that I'll share with you. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's pretty much all I've got on organ damage. There. Yeah. Um, we don't know the long term effects. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot there. I can just quickly go through some of like what happens to the organs if if you'd like. So it, it's split up into symptoms and pathology. So um, you know, uh, chest pain and palpitations. That's obviously affecting your heart. Uh, car that's cardiac impairment, uh, myocardial inflammation. Um, you know, lungs, uh, abnormal gas exchange. So you've got mm. coughs and and whatnot. Um, and the immune system. This is the main one. Autoimmunity is, and I'm not mentioning all of these things here, you can find this information and go and look at them more in depth, you know, uh, but autoimmunity, that's, um, that that can happen with, with COVID-19 with, with COVID or, or long COVID and autoimmune, you know, like autoimmune disorders, which are real not, really not good. It's your immune system attacking itself, well, attacking your body and your immune system is really bloody good at doing its job. And the last thing you want it to do <laughs> is, turn is on to you. turn on you, yeah. really, because, you know, it, it just starts destroying. I mean, so many conditions, um, you know, the really, really sort of um, nasty ones that you've heard of, uh, sort of autoimmune con conditions. I think rheumatoid arthritis might be an autoimmune disorder. And that's like, you know, arthritis is like this mm. pain in your joints. And rheumato yeah, rheumatoid arth arthritis, sort of inflammation in your joints um, caused by, I think, an autoimmune disorder. I, I may be wrong there. I I I've not looked into it for this episode. It's just, you know, um, background knowledge I have from elsewhere in my life, but you know, but um, yeah, it could be really, really debilitating. Um, autoimmune disorders can be real bad. And another reason not to sort of subscribe to the idea that like, oh, well, I'll just get the virus. And mm -hmm. then, I mean, obviously it's a bit late now, like yeah. you probably made that decision and, yeah. it, you know, it's probably too late for you if you didn't get your vaccine. Well, it's, not, probably, it's never too late to get a vaccine. It's never too late to get a vaccine. vaccine. Never, never too late to get a vaccine. vaccine. But you probably have had COVID unvaccinated if you decide not to get your vaccine. But my point being yeah. that like, if the idea that you could like get the vaccine and get immunity, well, you're also risking having a less effective immune system yeah. because if you get an autoimmune dis disease, um, one of the things you might have to do is take an immunosuppressant, mm -hmm. which then lowers your immunity to everything, including COVID and yeah. everything. Yeah. You can also get diabetes because it affects your pancreas, um, gut dysbiosis. So that's the, the microbiome in your gut um, being thrown out of whack. And we've spoken about that a number of times on the podcast. So, you know, go back and watch those episodes if you want to understand that more in depth. But gut dysbiosis is no bueno. Um, your gut is one of the most important things in your body because it, it's the it's the thing that makes you have the energy that you need to move. I mean, of there's so many important things in your body, but you know, um, the microbiome is so important um, in a way that people don't really, I think, um, respect mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. just in the general public because they don't know. Um, and then we've all, we've already spoken about the brain, but yeah, there's there's reduced cerebral blood flow blood flow, like you were sort of mentioning there, which would be sort of like lack of oxygen mm. there, um, uh, chronic fatigue sy syndrome, um, you know, caused by all of this sort of stuff. 
And that would be causing, uh, those sort of things would be causing your cognitive impairment, fatigue, a sleep dis a disordered sleep, memory loss, tinnitus. Um, you could have uh, it just injury to your kidneys, spleen and liver. Um, and th this is the effect on your uh, blood vessels, you know, deep uh, vein thrombosis, um, endothelial dysfunction, uh, microclots, pulmonary embolisms, strokes, all of these sorts of things, um, you know, it could be, could be, you know, sort of uh, caused by covid mm. or you know long covid like it affects like your entire body and you know just just in in general sort of affecting your um sort of circulatory system your blood vessels um that can cause fatigue as well and also the reproductive system so this is one that people are probably going to perk up listening to listening to it could cause erectile dysfunction um can cause irregular menstruation uh reduced sperm count all of these sorts of things there's not a lot of um sort of data on this just yet but yeah we we have uh we have some data showing that yeah they could have these effects on your um, reproductive system. It's not good. Ding, a ling, a ling. Is that the ad bell I hear? I think he's getting stronger. He's getting so strong. Look, do you know where his source of power comes Is from? Is it from our new merchandise? It's from unsold merchandise. So to help us fight against the ad bell <laughs> and it's growing, growing fascism across the land. Yes, our ad bell is fascist. That's canon now. I said it. You got to get some Psy Guys merch from psyguys.co.uk forward slash merch. Are you telling me that the ad bell controls the railways and the flow of commerce? Yes. So our new merchandise comes in three lovely flavors. Corey, could you tell us what those flavors are? First off is the Black Ringer tea that says, thanks capitalism with a burning planet Earth on it. That's a little, that's a little subtle reference to climate change if you catch my drift, but that's not all we've got. If you like things to be a little bit more hot in a different way, we've got the sexy scientist calendar, which I'm holding right here. If you're listening, <laughs> Go ahead and have a little look. Listen to those pages. They're so oh. crisp. So January, as you can see, uh, I'll cover up most of it. it. It's got Albert Einstein, but on a sexy body. There are 11 more sexy pictures to come as well. <laughs> not, not, not to come. There are just 11 more pictures. They're safe for work. There's also a fourth Psy Guy badge. <laughs> yes, there is, Corey. I'll save you from the hole you're digging for yourself. We have a fourth Psy Guys badge, a little pin badge you put on yourself or your bag or your friends. I have um, it in my hands. Wow, what a nice it's, badge. It's here. Look at it. Shall I do a close-up of the badge? Please, because it's not actually in the room and no, we're getting the is. shot later. Because it hasn't close, arrived yet. It's in my hand and let's do a close-up of it now. Ooh. Wow, so close, so reflective, so Psy Guy. Are you enjoying looking at it in the room right now, Luke? Uh, oh, oh, goodness me, it glistens in the sun. <laughs> the windows are closed, that doesn't make sense. Anyway, so you can head to psyguys.co.uk forward slash merch. You can pre-order all of this beautiful merchandise for it to land on your doorstep not long from now. Uh, I think that's everything, is it? Oh, and you can help us destroy the evil ad bell. Because the more merch you buy, the less ad bell. So as Luke said, if you want to destroy the ad bell, head to psyguys.co.uk forward slash merch and get yourself some merch with a little pre-order discount. That's, that's, that's all. We're not going back to the show until you do it. We can wait. We're waiting. Go on, do wow. it now. Can't believe you're holding this up for everybody. Oh, What's... you did it. Thank you. Okay, great. It's back, back to the show. Back to the show. <laughs> So, Luke, I just want to talk about the cause of long COVID or some risk factors and whatnot. So um, you were asking, you know, how does this, how does it affect all of your sort of, sort of organ systems? And we'll, we'll get there. Um, I just really quickly want to touch on some of these risk factors for sort of developing long COVID. So um, it's, it's more common in women, in cis women. So you know, what What my notes are saying here is risk factors potentially include female sex. I believe that's from either the CDC or the NHS, wow. can't quite remember, but yeah. Um, so uh, female sex, uh, yeah, it, it could potentially be a risk factor. I think there's just an increased risk there. Um, type 2 diabetes, um, Epstein-Barr virus reactivation. So, um, you know what Epstein-Barr virus no, is? I can't Have remember. you heard of mono? I've heard of, yes. No. Yeah, like kissing disease. It's the one that like, flies up your glands. Glandular, glandular fever. fever. Glandular yes. fever, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it could um, re sort of restart that. Oh, um, that's nasty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, connective tissue disorders, ADHD, um, these, like, all of these sorts of things. Um, but yeah, it's more common to people that, with ADHD wow. and whatnot. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's really interesting. Um, uh, so, uh, allergic uh, rhinitis, I think it's how you pronounce it. I, yeah, I know the I've word. Heard that. It's yeah, awful. which is um, you know basically just sort of allergies. You know, um, like having that sort of reaction, allergic reaction, like a cold, like runny nose, and all the cough and all that sort of stuff, um, to pollen, dust, dander. You know. 
those sort of allerg- allergens there. Um, and socioeconomic risk factors, uh, because obviously we should mm. mention those. Mm. Uh, what, would you, I'll give you one single guess, Luke. <laughs> What uh, what factor do you think? Um, <laughs> oh, being loaded. I think being loaded would rate you much more at risk for this. Really? Being loaded and sexy. Mm, mm-hmm. And having loads of really powerful friends. Yeah. And maybe not going out to work in like places where there's lots of other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably yeah, do it. Yeah. yeah. That's funny, Luke. You were so close. Is it almost the opposite it's, of everything It's pretty I just much said? the exact opposite <laughs> of what you've just said there. Yeah, no. No, lower income um, and an inability to adequately rest in the early weeks after developing COVID-19 are socioeconomic risk factors. Uh, to be fair, I have that, but not for a socioeconomic perspective, just because I don't let myself rest. Yeah, no, same. same, 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 same. Uh, self-employed, right? But but no, um, but yeah, no, no. In, in all seriousness, like you know, having a yeah. lower income and then not being able to take t- that time off work, yeah. can then you know give you a long-lasting, somewhat disabling condition. And presumably, also, you're more likely to get COVID in the first place as well. Well, but perhaps, yeah, absolutely. If yeah. you're, I mean, if you're working in the service industry or whatnot, yeah, yeah. Or, or even even teachers, you know. Because yeah. we're just sending kids back into school now. Um, it's it's mad, yeah. But uh, I do want to mention that a third of people with long COVID don't have any pre-existing conditions. So, you know, it's it's not just like, oh, if you've got something, in, you know, you're at higher risk, but I'm actually a help. No, no, a third of people, you know, that's like, that's, uh, uh, you know, it's not a majority. It's a minority, but it's a third. It's still that's, yeah. it's still a lot. You know, those are not good odds, okay? Uh, but yes, let's talk about the causes. So there have been a few different hypotheses uh, for the pathogenesis, sort of uh, viral reservoirs um, in tissues. I'll, I'll get into that because that's Ooh. quite interesting. Immune dysregulation. Um, so that could be with or without the sort of reactivation that we were talking about of like um, different pathogens uh, like herpes viruses because they basically they stay around. in your system. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's why, you know, a cold sore is a, is a herpes virus and that's why, you know, um, you just get a cold sore randomly um, basically when your immune system is like maybe a little bit more run down, you can, it can mm. pop up again. Same with um, genital herpes. Um, yeah, it kind of stays in your system and so it could, it could be related to sort of that sort of thing there. Um, uh, you know, uh, the effect that it has on the microbiome um, and also the virome, which would be sort of, think of it as like a sort of viral microbiome, um, autoimmunity. Um, and then, uh, gosh, there's this thing called molecular mimicry, which, I mean, I'm going to explain it very broadly and very quickly, it would essentially be sort of like, do you know how your uh, immune system recognizes things based on the chemicals that are on the outside? Because mm-hmm. you can't see, obviously. So it's like, mm, this chemical, oh, well, in my, in my sort of, this means this thing, this is bad. I don't recognize this. This isn't this isn't Luke. Bad, right? Um, <laughs> That's very sweet. Yeah, but this sort of molecular <laughs> mimicry it means that the molecules that it's detecting are, you know, sort of um, more similar to Luke molecules, let's say, right? And so. That means that it would then sort of start having a reaction to those, basically, right? I think that's broadly. Look into it yourself, but. That's a very brief, um, broad description of it. Microvascular blood clotting uh, with endothelial dysfunction. That's kind of what we were mentioning earlier of like, you know, these really small blood vessels being um, like getting like little clots and that causing issues there. And then there's also a mention of dysfunctional signaling in the brainstem uh, or vagus nerve. So all of these sorts of things um these are all hypotheses for how this could sort of work or or, or happen. Um but yeah, I mean, we we've known about um, different viruses that have um, that cause illnesses after you're infected and after you've kind of got um, you know after you're like no longer infectious, you know, um, you know, like um, chronic fatigue syndrome, which I've already mentioned here, um, that can be caused by you know uh, viruses, uh, you know, just kind of like it, you you have a virus, you get ill, and then you get over the sort of illness of the virus, and then you end up with um, CFS. But yeah, from my reading, it seems that, you know, uh, COVID, long COVID is similar to that. You know, uh, the mechanics of that are quite, um, the me- mechanisms are quite similar there. But um, yeah, so do you want to talk about the sort of, um, let's say, what is it? The sort of reservoir that, that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, so I'm guessing that's like um, sort of bits of the COVID virus just sort of hiding in a little, in a little uh little hole somewhere just <laughs> hanging out like whilst the immune system goes by <laughs> yeah I, mean, I wouldn't say you're yeah, I wouldn't say you're too far off there so um from my understanding of sort of this sort of viral reservoir um concept essentially you're testing negative right 
And we'd imagine that when you're testing negative, that means the virus is no longer in your system. And what we're doing is we're shoving stuff up our noses and um, down our throats mm -hmm. uh, to, to test. And the reason that we're doing that is because that's where you'd expect to find, to find the virus because it's a respiratory illness. So it's going to be likely in the place that it's causing the problems, right? But the idea here is that the virus isn't just present in those areas. And in fact, once you've kind of got over the disease, the virus could still be elsewhere in your body, but that wouldn't really be, that wouldn't be picked up by the tests that we're doing. Okay. So even though you're testing negative, you've got like, um, you've got maybe like a, even a lower viral load, you know, um, it's still elsewhere in your body. So it could be in your guts. It could be, um, just, let's say in your brain. I'm, I'm not saying that it, that it, that that's what I've read. I'm just using these as sort of mm -hmm. hypothetical examples, right? I have read the gut though, actually. So let's say it could be in your gut, hanging out there and you're not going to find something in your gut by shoving something up your nose, right? So whilst you're, you you don't have, you know, COVID because you've not you've not got the sort of disease or the, the symptoms of that. Long COVID could be caused by the virus hanging out in other areas of your body and then continuing to cause problems uh, because it's still there in your body. So that would sort of change. That would change in if that were true. Long COVID from being like a sort of sort of syndrome, sort of circumstance you are in, to actually you just being ill still for a very long time. I think the distinction is, uh, I, I think that distinction is not necessarily all that useful. I understand, no, I, under no, I understand making the distinction, but what, what I mean to say is that you're not infectious by that point at all. Do you know what I mean? As yeah. like, so there's, it's kind of this post infectious period um, because viruses can hang out in your system, you know, um, for like some of them, like there, there are retroviruses that are like, I'm, I'm part. I'm just in you now. I'm just there. Yeah. So imagine you had an illness that infected you. Yeah. And then it infect it, it went into your brain and it knocked out the bit of your brain that does maths. Mm -hmm. And then um, you you became better from that illness. The virus is no longer in you, but it's it's broken the bit of you that does maths. And yeah. You can't do maths anymore. Versus you getting an illness that means whilst you're infected with that illness, you can't do maths. And were you to cure that illness, you would be able to do maths again, mm -hmm. but you can't detect the illness because any of your testing things mean that you can't get it and you don't know how to cure it. So you just can't do maths. Yeah. No, like, I, I, I understand. No, that. I, I understand. From the per perspective but, of the person, it's sort of irrelevant, the difference. But, but. but on top of that, what I mean is that it could also be a combination of both. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Fine. Yeah. Um, and it could be different amongst different people, where in some people there is that sort of viral reservoir, and others there isn't. Like it, it doesn't. Let's not necessarily think of this as having one singular cause. Yeah. Like obviously the singular cause is coronavirus. That that specific <laughs> coronavirus or, yeah. or whatever you know strain or um, uh, variant of it. Right. That's the root cause there. But. Um, it could, it, you know, there could be many different sort of pathways yeah. that that leads people that lead people to, you know, developing long COVID. But yeah, I mean, it's really rough. Um, there's also this thing called a disautotonomy. Uh, dis oh, God, I don't know why I'm not able to pronounce things. Uh, disautonomia. I know why. Disautonomia. Disautonomia. Oh my gosh. And I I know this word. Like this isn't a difficult word for me. I'm just. Oh, don't you do that, it's Luke? It's the long COVID. God damn it! At it again. <laughs> but yeah, that would be a dysfunction of your autonomic nervous system. So that would be the sort of stuff that you do without thinking, like breathing and. I mean, a lot for me talking, um, but you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. So your autonomic nervous system controls things like, you know, your involuntary functions, like Heartbeating. heartbeat and all that sort of stuff. So digestion. Um, yeah. So, you know, it could affect that. Um, and we've also seen that in other post viral illnesses. Um, and it is frequently seen, you know, with long COVID. So it's, it's it's quite a complex thing, but also quite simple, you know. Let's stop people from getting COVID as much as we can, you know. Um, and people say, you know, well, we can't do lockdowns, effect on mental health, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, anyone that says, you know, we can't do a lockdown because of mental health, you don't care about mental health. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. You just don't like lockdowns because you're a baby. Um, but no, no, like, and don't get me wrong. Like, the mental health impacts of a lockdown are terribly serious. Yes, yeah. absolutely. But you can support people's mental health um, through that time and afterwards, um, because, you know, because that's, that's probably much easier to do than dealing with like 10 to up to 70% for certain groups of people, you know, who get this disease ending up with longer lasting conditions. And this doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, yeah, like you, you have this for the rest of your life. For some people, maybe, you know, we don't know. We've not, we've, we've not had enough time, but you know, two years 
you know, we've seen things lasting for up to two years. And if if we get to a point that, you know, the conservative government has pretty openly said they want, um, which is it just becoming um, another annual sort of disease, like another sort of flu that you that you sort of, you know, obviously it's not a flu, it's not an influenza virus, but similar to, you know, um, sort of seasonal flus. Does that mean that we're just going to deal with 10% of people that get this seasonal illness, what, being ill for a year? And then maybe that happening again? Do you know what I mean? Like, because there doesn't seem to be any, I've, I've not found, and I'm not saying this isn't the case, but there doesn't, I've not found any information saying that, you know, um, getting COVID, then getting post, uh, sort of, or long COVID, you know, would mean that you are less likely to get COVID and then get long COVID again mm. after that. You know, I mean, you can, even if, let's say, it only lasts a year, if it's an, if it's a seasonal thing, you can imagine a situation where, like, every year, well, You've got then this, you've got another period of like, oh, well, I'm ill for like 12 weeks. I mean, yeah. like a few months. Like, It's not good. Yeah. It's bad. And I, I, as well, like I, I know we sort of laughed about it at the start, but like um, crucially, I think as well, is that not only are they, are they going to just go, right, we'll just we'll just live with COVID, right? Yeah. And we'll just accept the downsides of, of COVID. And that includes long COVID for, for, for lots of people. Not only are they going to do that, they're also not, they're going to do the, their damnedest to not help those people. Yeah as yep. well they're not just going right we'll just live with it they're going we'll live with it and and then people will go like well but we should maybe like get people should get like get, get benefits so then if you're gonna put the risk on the people well, people should get benefits if they have long covid um which sort of help them help them out like not force them to do as much work and they'll go nah we can probably get away with not doing that too well i mean i guess uh, i agree with you but i want to be um i want to be very clear i think you could potentially i guess technically get some disability I'm benefits sure you can, like yes. personal independent payments or whatnot yeah um oh yeah but has anyone ever tried to actually apply for those things <laughs> yeah they're really rough they, they, yeah. they're really they do not want you to get them yeah. um it seems before we get into the treatment i just want to say one last interesting thing about you know sort of um, cognitive impairment and causes of these sorts of things um they, they found some you know in some studies um kind of like in Alzheimer's, uh, you know, we did an episode on that recently, go and check it out. But um, kind of like in that, wherein, if, if you remember, there were sort of like amyloids, like clumps of sort of proteins or peptides that kind of like, get, kind of get all gunked up in the brain and cause mm. issues. And they found, um, they found that, you know, um, <laughs> in, in patients with long COVID, there are these peptides that self-assemble, that kind of come together um, into these sort of, amyloid clumps and that that is bad for your neurons uh, i mean quite literally it kills uh, them off, yeah. yeah toxic um which then causes neuroinflammation um uh brain and brainstem hypometabolism correlated with specific symptoms of abnormal cerebrospinal uh, cerebro fluid findings in non-hospitalized individuals with long covid along with an association between younger age and delayed onset of neurological symptoms so what what we're what we're kind of uh seeing there is what that's saying is that, you know, younger people who, you know, um, you know, who, who get this might have a delayed onset of symptoms. So even if you feel fine, like it could take a while and have, mm -hmm. uh, have, a, have an effect because it is a sort of cumulative thing. If like, you know, if like it over time, mm. if more of these sort of amyloid clumps are forming and, you know, causing inflammation and um, cause, causing damage to neurons, you know, you're not necessarily going to see it absolutely immediately. Yeah. But Imagine yeah. We, we get to like age 60, 70, and it turns out we're getting like earlier and earlier onset dementia. And it's because mm. of the way that we handled the pandemic yeah. like 40 years ago. Yeah. That would be insane. Absolute hypothetical. Of course. To, to, to of be course. And I know, no, bear in mind that when I'm saying yeah. this, I'm not saying it for you. I'm saying it for the YouTube reviewers. Okay? <laughs> we're, we're being clear about hypotheticals and the, the hypothetical here, which is, yeah, that, you know, we think of these things as being very much in the moment, you know? Oh, well, you've got this thing and it's fine. But you're so right that when it comes to health, there can be long-term impact. I mean, look at um, the thalidomide um, sort of scandal that happened there. We did an episode on that as well. But if you if you look at that, thalidomide was being used as a morning sickness drug. They didn't bother to test it on what, I mean, it was. I think it was being used off-label as a morning sickness drug. Maybe it was being used as a morning sickness drug. I did the episode, go and watch it. I can't remember. But um, <laughs> the fact is that they were giving it to pregnant women and they hadn't adequately tested it on pregnant women. And then a whole bunch of babies were born, like, you know, with sort of limb differences um, you know, like, you know, with some with no limbs and whatnot, because that's the effect that this thing had. Um, and, you know, that's like, that's only nine months, you know, at absolute maximum, right? Nine months at absolute maximum. But even then, you know, you think, well, this is fine now. 
yeah, but you've not thought about the long reaching effect. And even then, like, you know, that, like, having, like, so many uh, disabled babies being born at that time is going to, p- going, going to have an impact on your healthcare system, on your economy and whatnot, right? Mm-hmm. And obviously, you know, there are things more important than that, you know, like people's well-being and their, their quality of life and of whatnot course, and, yeah. and you know, all of these sorts of things. But from the perspective of people who are making these decisions, even if you don't care about that, which it seems they don't, it is still going to affect, you know, the things that you do care about. Um, and and yeah, you're, you're so right that, you know, we don't know what the long reaching effects of this are. Like when people are fear mongering about vaccines saying, oh, but in 20 years you could drop dead. There is like no evidence that vaccines are dangerous. Like there's no evidence that vaccines are more dangerous, I should say, than the diseases we use <laughs> we use them to prevent, right? Um, and I find it odd that people are so so ready to be up in arms against vaccines, but we have you know the very beginnings of some evidence, some some evidence that suggests that this could be the case. You know that there's an Alzheimer's uh, disease like sort of mechanism going on here. That should be terrifying really terrifying that's something that we should really be paying attention to and and we're really not but um let's talk about treatment because you mentioned there you know that you know sort of the government isn't really doing much about that but i, I do want to say that you know there is uh you, you there is a sort of like a covid19 long covid care plan it's i think you speak to your sort of gp and you can you can get your sort of care plan but ultimately um there's not much that we can do it's more about management of symptoms yeah. and mental health um issues and whatnot that come from that um but yeah uh just to be absolutely clear here from the nhs uh this is just going to be some quotes from the nhs recovery from long covid varies some symptoms can improve quickly and others last longer the chances of having long-term symptoms does not seem to be linked to how ill you are when you first get covid19 and people who had mild symptoms at first can still have long-term problems. All of this goes against, I guess, common sense, which is what a lot of people tend to use when it comes to this sort of stuff. And once again, biology doesn't follow common sense. (laughs) Like, actually, very little of science follows common sense because common sense, once again, is nothing but you feeling something and being like, hmm, my bias is probably right. Of course you think your bias is right. <laughs> it's a <your> bias. bias. <laughs> Common sense is stupid. It's bad. Don't use it. Bad. Stop it. Common sense is okay if we confirm the common sense is okay. A science. Yeah. 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 Okay. But what I mean is sometimes, <laughs> sometimes the NHS, like, um, no, I, I do not quote me on a specific, I, I yeah. know I've seen this at some point, says like, the general treatment guidelines for this are to follow your common sense. Yeah. And, and, but that's because we've checked that people's general common sense yeah. makes does actually work. And we've ratified it and gone, yes, follow your common sense in this specific situation. Yeah, like generally when it comes to food, like, you know, um, follow your common sense when it comes to fruit and vegetables. Are they rotting? You probably don't want to eat that, right? You know, like, has it got a big bit of mold on it? No, you you probably don't want to eat that either, right? (laughs) Did you see a worm crawling out of it? You probably want to get rid of it. Like that's probably those want are to eat the worm the, if you the, are a bird. But those are common sense things that are fairly like you know you're you know there are higher stakes. They're high stakes because you know food poisoning is is can be quite serious. But also your your people's sense is generally quite good for it. I think common sense is 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 fine for low stake situations or for slightly medium stake situations where but, common sense is good. As you explained at the start of this, actually, common sense in even in that situation doesn't always make sense because like chopping off the moldy bit doesn't automatically yeah. mean you've chopped out all the mold because some of the molds inside the fruit yeah right and so yeah that's a great example of mm-hmm. where like sometimes common sense is great sometimes common sense is nonsense yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely I mean I-, I would say that ultimately common sense is nonsense and sometimes you're lucky <laughs> like sure like because look to me common sense is just saying I know nothing about this but I reckon something. Yeah. Clock, I reckon real good. A clock is right twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> a, a stopped clock a, is sorry, right. Sorry, a stopped clock a, a, is right. <laughs> ideally, a clock is right all day. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you should ignore your common sense and ignore me too. <laughs> I think that's the end of the episode. Look, there's just one thing left to do. Oh, dun, 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 dun. It's the quick for our quiz. Long COVID edition. So the rules for the quick for our quiz are the same as always. I'll ask one question. That's one question between you and the audience. Look, the first person to answer the question after Phoenix asking it wins what do they win a little vaccine just a little one well hopefully the correct sized vaccine I think it's just a standard size I don't think they change it for things that one size fits all mate <laughs> well they win that <laughs> 
So <laughs> my question for you is, what does the SARS in SARS-CoV-2 stand for? Severe upper, no. S A R S. S A. I know, I know. S severe? Yeah. Respiratory syndrome. Ah, severe. Ah. Oh, you're so, you're so pretty. Oh, you're so fun and, and quirky and like you're small and like if you were a, a dog. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well done. Did you beat me? <laughs> yes. I doubt it. I was so speedy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll edit it, man. I'll edit it. Sometimes I do, like sometimes you take too long and I cut out just a little bit so that people feel there's some competition. Right. I can't do that with this one. Oh, thank you very much. But that is it. That is it for us this week. Before we go, we'd like to thank all of our patrons with an extra special thank you to executive producers Dinito and Glitch Rabbit, and thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode down in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday, and why not leave us a nice wee comment? You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys, or you can find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and at SciGuys on TikTok too. Or you can send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. That's SciGuysPod at gmail.com. SciGuysPod at gmail.com. You can follow me at not Corey everywhere. You can follow me at Luke Cupworth everywhere. Bye. Bye. Bye.